welcome to our communion service here at St James's. All the words that you will need during the service will come on the bottom of the screen. You may like to get some bread and wine so that you can share with others when we get to the communion. So let's have a moment of quiet as we begin. The Lord be with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed. Through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us, all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Old Testament reading is taken from the book of Hosea, chapter 2, verses 14 to 16 and 19 and 20. Therefore, I am now going to allure her. I will lead her into the wilderness and speak tenderly to her. Therefore, I will give her back her vineyards and will make the valley of Achor, meaning trouble, a door of hope. There she will respond as in the days of her youth as in the day she came up out of Egypt. In that day, declares the Lord, you will call me my husband. You will no longer call me my master. Verse 19, I will betroth you to me forever. I will betroth you in righteousness and justice, in love and compassion. I will betroth you in faithfulness and you will acknowledge the Lord. This is the word of God. The gospel reading is from Matthew chapter nine, verses 18 to 26. While he was saying this, a synagogue leader came and knelt before him and said, my daughter has just died, but come and put your hand on her and she will live. Jesus got up and went with him and so did his disciples. 
Just then a woman who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years came up behind him and touched the edge of his cloak. She said to herself, if I only touch his cloak, I will be healed. Jesus turned and saw her. Take heart, daughter, he said. Your faith has healed you. And the woman was healed at that moment. When Jesus entered the synagogue leader's house and saw the noisy crowd and people playing pipes, he said, go away. The girl is not dead, but asleep. But they laughed at him. After the crowd had been put, a sat put outside, he went in and took the girl by the hand and she got up. News of this spread through all that region. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning. My name is Jill MacDonald and I am a licensed lay minister. And it's a pleasure to be here this morning to share the word of God with you. I've chosen to talk about the passage from Hosea for two reasons. Um, one is that um, this really is about the marriage of God with his chosen people Israel and it's about a bad marriage but it's also about how a marriage can be made a good marriage. And the second reason, which is more positive for me, is that 30 years ago, when a friend led me to the Lord, she was also instrumental in my coming to a realization and revelation of God's love and purposes for Israel and how I can play a part in the Jewish people willing, coming to come to faith in their Messiah, Yeshua, Jesus Christ. Hosea is a prophet. He's highly respected. He's a righteous man of God. He hears God's voice and he speaks to the nation. <clears throat> Today, you might think of the Archbishop of Canterbury, or if you're a Catholic, the Pope even. God asks him, this, you know, righteous man, to take as his wife a prostitute, to take Goma. Can you imagine the shock, horror even, and the impact on the Hebrews? Goma bears children, and one isn't even his. She then returns to her former lovers, maybe beguiled by the riches or the decadence, or maybe she is a, an addict, who knows. Time passes and she ends up destitute. God then tells Hosea, go to the marketplace, public place, go and buy her back. And he spends a lot of money, 15 shekels of silver and a lot of barley to buy her though she's probably very much despoiled by the sin, simple life that she's led. Then God says, Goma and Hosea have to live together, learning to love one another again, learning to trust again and respect each other and care for each other. Hosea has, he's, he's obedient to God, but what a big ask God has given him. The Israelites have been unfaithful to God, seeking after other gods, tempted, tainted by false worship, and they are breaking God's heart. For a prophet to truly speak from his heart, he has to understand the pain, feel the pain that God feels for his people. So that is why Hosea in obedience and why God asks him to do this thing. He puts himself in this heartbreaking, 
shameful and humiliation, humiliating situation. Some of you might know people or in the past you might have experienced some this pain when somebody you have loved and you've cared for, you've protected, you've been intimate with and they have betrayed you. It is heartbreaking and that is how God feels when the Hebrews have sought and gone after other gods. Hosea had to feel God's pain in order to communicate that to the Hebrews, for them to understand how much they are breaking God's heart. God, in this passage, shares how much he loves them. He loves them and he loves all human beings. But we seek after other gods. As they did, we might put our careers, our families, our hobbies before him. And just as in a good marriage, your spouse must be number one next to God. He must or she must be number one and take priority over everything and everyone else. And that is how a marriage is strong. So is should be our relationship with Father God. He must take priority. And then we will be strong to face the world together. But what does God do? He doesn't give up on them. He sends Jesus to die for us. <clears throat> he puts himself into a very vulnerable position of loving human beings and feeling the pain when they, when they abandon him. So what does he do? He sends Jesus to die for us and to restore this good relationship, to bring us back into a sort of bridal position where we can appreciate how much he's done for us and love him and he can shower us with his love. He makes himself very vulnerable by loving us. And he made himself very vulnerable to the Hebrews too, by loving them. But in this passage, he says, my delight is in you. You are my bride. I love you with an everlasting love. And he says it to us too. I will betroth you to me forever. Forever is forever. There's no breaking forever. There's no limit to the word forever. He says, I will betroth you. He says to the Hebrews, I will betroth you to me forever. I will betroth you in righteousness and justice, with love and compassion. I will betroth you in faithfulness and you will acknowledge the Lord. Thank you, Lord. We thank you so much for your love for each one of us. We thank you, Lord, that when we turn away, you do not turn away. And you just long to bring us back into that close, intimate relationship with you. there's anybody who's feeling the pain of betrayal, Father God, I pray that you would send your Holy Spirit and heal that pain. It can have been from many years ago, but God wants to heal our broken hearts. So Lord, we thank you that your Holy Spirit can heal us and restore us. 
and we so praise you, Lord, for our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. And on the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through his prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his commands, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of you. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection, his glorious ascension, and we look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. So as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. 
Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. So draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessing of God Almighty the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you this day and always. Amen.